So the first stage we're looking at is inception. And as I said, that's a lot of what Joe's been tackled. You obtain what the client wants. What is his statement of requirements? What does he want to achieve? Does he want to build a residential house? From there, we will now go into the outline proposals where we will now look at the client's requirements and uh, come up with a brief. And in this brief, state the objectives. What what does the client want? What is the quality of building that the person wants? What is the scope of services? Are there options of either refurbishing an existing house or would you like to just completely do a new build? And in that way, you'd be able to advise on the professionals that are required and what are the project delivery options? So this is what the brief is all about. In some cases, depending on the scale of the project, you may need to undertake some feasibility studies. What have other people done? If you're putting up a rental apartments in a particular area, what is the current rental income from those apartments so that you know what is the base standards that you're looking at? And this becomes very important. I saw some questions on cost because why construction can be very expensive, especially if you have to borrow money, is that uh, borrowing money means that the construction comes at a cost and you will need to recover that cost through, say, for example, your rental income. So the design at that point is going to have to reflect the needs or rather the, the standards of rent that is commanded in that particular area. Then you'll also need to look at site surveys. I think this was something that Josephine alluded to. What are the site conditions? What are the nearest roads, the services, the utilities, and the general environmental considerations that you may need to consider when you're designing? So this is really the outline proposal to give an overview of what are the constraints that uh, the project will face and what are the opportunities that you have as an investor or, as a, or a, as a person who is putting up their dream project. So that is under outline proposal. Then the second stage is what we call the scheme design. And I think this is where you see us, we're bringing in a lot of drawings that show how the space layer will come about and they indicate the things that I talked about, the functional requirements, the structure that you're going to use, and even the styling or the aesthetic considerations that you'd want. Then the next stage, which is the fourth stage, is the detailed design and production drawings, which in my opinion is one of the most important because this is what tells the contractor or the fundi, how are we going to put the, the building together? And it's even more important in as far as cost is concerned, because through the various drawings and schedules that will come about, you'll be able to detail the cost of your project down to almost the last nail. As we prepared for this webinar, we were talking with Justin and we were saying that it would be interesting for even our clients to know that if you look at the cost of a residential building, for example, putting up the structure, what you see, the walls and the foundation and the slabs and roofing may actually account for, say, 60 or 50 to 60 percent of the cost. The remaining amount goes into finishing. The drawings that um, an architect produces that tells the contractor or tells the fundi what type of finishes we want. Do we look for wooden floors? Are we looking at, for example, ceramic tiles? All those drawings will, be, will have an implication on cost. And it is important that these details are actually figured out at that stage of detailed design and production drawing so that you as the developer know what to expect in terms of cost and also in terms of quality and therefore be able to demand it of your fundies. So a, a lot of that work that will, that will enable you get a, a good picture of what your, your project is comes at this stage. And then now we have the actual construction, which is the stage five that is there from tender action to construction and completion, where now we will obtain authority from you, the client, to submit documents for tendering. If you choose to go with a contractor, you will evaluate their offers and recommend the award of that contract to a certain contractor. Any documentation that would be required to enable the contractor to put your building together will be arranged by the architect at this stage. And then you will, as an architect, you'll be able to hand over the site to the contractor, supervise it. I think there was something about project management. This is now where the architect comes in as a project manager, managing the day-to-day -day 
activities on the site. Finally, when the building is over, you'll be able to hand it over to you, complete and close out and you prepare any necessary documentation that will facilitate you to make use of that building very well. So in a nutshell, those are the five key stages that we will take you through as an architect. I think just as uh, Rita outlined, through the governing bodies is how payments are outlined. According to CAP 525, for the architect, inception stage, stroke outline stage, it's charged at 1%. Then scheme design stage is charged at 1.5. Detail to production design, as Rita said, because this is the most intense, is 2%. And then tender to completion is 1.5%, which totals up to 6% of cost of construction. Mm-hmm.